Hi, this is the correlation indicator between Microsoft and Apple stocks prices. The closing prices for these two assets on the daily time frame are the green curve for Microsoft and the blue curve for Apple. In this video, I will show you how you can code this correlation indicator for two assets in Python, including all its components, such as the standard deviation and the moving correlation average, so you can include it in your algorithmic trading strategies and your automated trading. As usual, the Python code is available for download from the link in the description of this video, so you can download the code and run it on your own for experimentation. To compute correlation, we need a series of values between two assets. We will consider the closing prices of the Apple and the Microsoft stocks as an example for this video. Then we consider a slice of candles to compute the Pearson correlation factor. And the value is saved as the most recent correlation for the last candle in the sliced window. Then we take a step forward in the data and we compute another correlation factor. And we keep sliding the candles window to compute all the correlations. Of course, the values will depend on the length of the considered window. So that's one parameter we will include in our coding. Also, we can extract the moving average of the correlation values as well to serve as a smooth reference value. Now let's move on to the coding part and see how it's done in Python. So this is our Jupyter notebook file. We're going to use Y Finance to get the data. Remember that we need the daily time frame. Then I'm going to define a new function named fetch stock data. It takes the name of the ticker, the name of the asset, and the, the maximum period actually, which is set to max in this case. So it's going to get the maximum number of candles allowed by Y Finance. Then a stock is equal to yfinance.ticker. So we're using the ticker function from yfinance to define the stock's name. And the data actually that we're going to uh, get from yfinance is equal to stock.history. The period is the maximum period and the interval is one day. So that's the daily time frame. And this function will return only the closing price because this is what we will need for this uh, example for computing the correlation. So data close. We're going to use this function for any asset. So now, for example, we have asset one is Apple, asset two is Microsoft. So asset one prices is equal to fetch stock data. We're calling the function and we just provide the name of the uh, first asset. Same for the second asset. And now we have the closing prices of both the Apple and the Microsoft stocks. Then I'm going to concatenate both of these in one data frame named data. So pandas.concatenate asset one prices and asset two prices along the axis equal one, and we're going to join inner. So we need days where we have data of both assets. Usually it would mean all the rows because we should be having the data for all the assets for all the days. But in case you have some missing data, some missing days, these are not going to be considered for the uh, concatenation part. Since we are computing correlation, we need the uh, prices of both assets at the same time. And whenever one is missing, this is not going to be possible. So the data.columns are asset one ticker, so the name of the first asset and the asset two ticker. And whenever we run this part, I'm going to skip this one because we haven't defined the uh, compute correlation signals yet, but this part of the code will provide this data, this data frame. So we have the date as an index, we have the names of the assets we're going to uh, compute the correlation for, so Apple and Microsoft, and we have their closing prices in one data frame. And this is the data frame we'll be using to compute correlation signals. Now I'm going back up to definitions of uh, the functions. So I'm going to define a new function named calculate correlation signals. It takes a data frame. So these are the closing prices, name of the asset one, name of the asset two, and the window which is used to compute the correlation factor between uh, the two assets. And then we have something called wide window. Actually, this one is used to compute the uh, a moving average of the correlation factor. It can be skipped actually if you want to just compute the correlation without smoothing them using a moving average. But I also added this one as a reference for our trading so you can use it as a trading indicator. Then we have the standard deviation factor. So that's three, which means we are going to plot the uh, standard deviation multiplied by three. So three times the standard deviation. The function returns a data frame with all the needed data. So we have the upper threshold for the moving average of the um, uh, correlation factors, the lower threshold using the standard correlation and the standard deviation factors, uh, the moving average of the correlation. We have the uh, correlation factor itself. And then we're going to generate a signal. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this in a while. But 
inside the function, this is what we are doing. First, we're going to check if we have the names of these columns, if everything is um, inside our data frame. Then we make a copy of the data frame so we don't touch the original uh, data. Then we, we define a new column named rolling correlation. And uh, using the asset one, actually, the asset one price, we're going to apply the rolling, the window, and the minimum period equal window. So we shouldn't be having, you can skip this uh, parameter actually, but that's the minimum allowed period for computing the uh, rolling, uh, the rolling correlation factor. And we're going to apply dot correlation. This is going to use the Pearson correlation by default. It's going to check the correlation with DF asset two. So that's asset one versus asset two on a rolling window. And it's going to add uh, the lower threshold, the upper threshold of the moving averages. Uh, of course, the rolling correlation uh, signal or the rolling correlation indicator, the average, the moving average, and, uh, and so on. We're also adding the signals if it's two and one by markers up or down. Then we have another function to plot the asset prices, the uh, closing prices of both assets in case needed. I'm going to run this um, cell to define all the functions. I'm going to get the data and we're going to uh, compute the results, which is simply calling the calculate correlation results. Now, if you don't like this code and if it's too much for you, you can just copy and paste this cell and just call these functions. You just call these functions and just modify some of the parameters. You don't have to recode the whole function. You can download the code, uh, just copy and paste the functions that you need and use them in your own uh, coding. It's going to compute the correlation factors and moving averages, standard deviation and so on. It takes around 6.7 seconds on mine and then we can plot uh, the correlation results. So we can see the rolling correlation. This is the blue curve, as you can see. And then its moving average is basically the green curve. So that's basically the moving average of the blue curve. Then we have the threshold range. So this is plus or minus three times the standard deviation. So you can see the, uh, the shadow around it. And whenever the um, original curve, the rolling correlation actually goes out of the boundaries, of the standard deviation, we're going to generate signal. If it's below, we're going to generate a buying signal, let's say. If it's above, we're going to generate a sell signal. But this is, again, this is meaningless. This is just an example to show you how you can code it. In my opinion, it has nothing to do with buying or selling. It's just showing you that there is a quick shift from one edge to another in the correlation factors between two assets. It might be that they are coming together, like converging together, or maybe they are um, splitting apart. In any case, on top of this signal, on top of this consideration and moving average and so on, you need also to take uh, the difference between the two assets into account. Like, are they closing together with a negative correlation or are they splitting apart as well with a negative correlation? Because in this case, it's going to be um, when one is going up, a second is going down, when one is going down, the second is going up, it's going to give extreme negative correlations like in this case. And then you can define when you can buy, when you have a long signal, when do you have a short signal. So I think I don't think this is enough. If you've ever traded correlation factors, please do let us know, leave a comment in the section so I can revisit the code and complete it make a full strategy out of it and maybe backtest it on historical data. And now I'm using this function just to uh, call plot asset prices to compute the closing prices of these uh, of these two assets. So as you can see, you have signals, let's say around here, you have an extreme signal, but what is happening exactly between this point and this point, the uh, assets are splitting apart. You can see that this part went down, this part went up, and this is why we have an extreme negative correlation. And since the uh, difference is increasing, this is where you can buy one asset, sell the other one at the same time, and then wait until they converge together. And this is how you can make some uh, positive returns. And here as well, we have some sort of a buying signal, but actually we're going to be buying and selling at the same time. So these signals are um, not really long and short. So it's between these two dates, so 1987, fourth and fifth month. So this is the uh, square we're talking about. And we can see that we have some kind of a positive correlation when one is going up, the second one is going up. We can buy one asset, sell one asset. And then when they converge right here, we close both of the trades. 
and the difference is actually going to be positive. In my opinion, this indicator works best whenever you have those clear shifts and constant decrease in the correlation of uh, the assets or between the two assets. Why? Because it's going to show a period of time, a slice of time, where the two assets are splitting apart, either in the positive direction or in the negative direction. And this is where you have a potential. So if you see this long line of signals and then some stagnating uh, signals, I would say, so this trend is stopping, it's the time to look at the chart and see what has happened. And this is a clear example where one asset is going up, the other one is going down. They are splitting apart, but they are usually uh, well correlated. So they are usually on the positive side of the correlation. This is correlation one, so which is the maximum correlation as usual. So if it, they are diverging from this behavior at some point, it means there is some kind of news or something happens and it's probably an opportunity on the market to take advantage of. Just keep in mind that this is the daily time frame. So whenever you go into a trade uh, with this approach or with this strategy, you need to wait uh, probably a month before you think of starting uh, to close your trades. Just to make things easier, I've combined the plotting into one function. So that's plot combined data. It takes data frame, uh, correlation data as well, starting index and ending index. And it's going to show you everything we've seen before, but also with the opening and the closing prices at the same in the same plot on the same canvas. So this way you can analyze your charts much easier, uh, as you can see. Just keep in mind that we have two Y axis, the uh, prices axis and the correlation factor axis, because they have different scales. And this will be it for this video. I hope you guys liked it and found the information helpful. If so, please leave a comment. Any ideas you are thinking about, maybe this strategy could be leveraged and revisited, recoded and backtested in the future. Thank you so much for your contribution. And until our next one, trade safe. See you next time.